and we're back to another edition of Let's Play Grandia. Your host, Nick Legato. So, as we're heading deeper into the slut ruins, I mean the salt ruins. Sorry, I said slut, didn't I? Didn't I? So, let's go ahead and keep moving here. Because now we're, pretty much now we're in the, oops, we're getting an attachment behind. No ambush because we got back attacked, much like an earthbound. Okay, so what is everybody doing here? Please divide. Now we even cover up again. This time we're gonna put a stop to that. Hopefully, hopefully. Let's see if we can try and make it a little safer. That's we're under attack. Yeah, that's what they look like when they defend. They look like oozing piles of dung. Ahead and let Justin finish this one off. Oh, that's a dodge right there. That's what a dodge looks like. You're critical, even though it probably wasn't necessary, but. And a critical only lets you do one attack, so that's something to keep in mind um, as well. So we find more herbs! Yay! Okay. Somebody's about to gain a mace level. Not that it means much, but one level is better than a switch kick and sustenance. I'm not going the right way, I don't think. Well, yes, I am. Let's head up here. Dang it! Ah. Well, I'm pooling! Pooling! Okay, well, let's try and get that back, huh? We allow Sue to go after the bats here. It's quite something she can actually kill. Ha <laughs> ha! What a cinch! Eventually, you also have a finite amount of inventory space, so eventually we won't be able to carry anything. We gotta get rid of stuff. And that's when it starts to get a little annoying. Because you're carrying around healing items you had no intention of ever using. Which happens to me a lot. You wanna play rough? Okay! There we go. We get our first axe. Which is good. We're not gonna equip it right now. Even though it is stronger than the mace, we're gonna wait. So we can at least work on the mace a little bit more here. Let's head back the way that we came. See, that's where I want to go, where those little things are on that bridge. Let me look at this. Okay. Just go ahead and head up. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. so this is the way I wanted to go, so... Boing! And this should lead us to one of the better pieces of items found here, the old armor. Go ahead and equip that armor, as it is an upgrade from the adventure, and the sun best and the adventure are actually the same defense-wise, so not a big thing to deal with or worry, have to worry about. Let's, um, let's see, there is an item. Go ahead and head straight for it. Alright, so as usual, the same strategy applies. We're gonna let Sue go after the bats and let Justin go after the slime. Pretty much let him kill all the slime so he can keep working on that mace level. That's the most important thing right now, is him strengthening up his mace level. Even if that means attacking an enemy, as you can see, who's defended. Who's able to defend. Haha, <laughs> stupid boy. This will give Justin an extra two attacks in there. It's not about how much damage he does, it's about how many times he attacks in a turn. So that's something you might want to think about, as you can see, he's got a nice little thing out of that. God, he's gonna get to that second level in no time. Um, at least once we get him two levels, we can pass the mace off to someone, to Sue. Because she needs a new weapon. Because of what happens is, as your weapon level goes up, you get less, you exponentially get less and less 
um, exp uh, weapon experience per kill. So eventually it gets to the point where your weapon leveling becomes obsolete on a certain weapon because of the enemy's strength or level. So it is, that's why you can't just level one weapon throughout the whole game. So some people will tell you that you could with weaker characters like Sue. You know, oh, don't ever use the baton, just, you know, work on her both. No, you can do both and actually max out both by sharing it. So, and I've seen it done without insane amounts of grinding. You just have to, oh my god, plan out how you want to do stuff. Here we go. And fight everything. You know, you're not grinding if you fight all the enemies in the dungeon once. And you fight them multiple times by leaving and coming back. That's when you're grinding. Okay, so let's see. Let's start there. And there. And our throw level went up. Let's go ahead and put a stop to that. Oh, we got cancelled. And he's stunned temporarily. That's okay. As that one, that slime is just trying to defend itself. So we'll probably want to make sure we aim to stop the cover-up from happening, because that's kind of putting a slowdown on leveling my baton here, which is not good. As we pick a fight with more slimes. Probably let Justin try and kill all of them, actually. If possible. We'll let Sue weaken one, one of them. Oh, well, there's only two. What? Okay, whatever. Not that much of a stickler over it, as we get two herbs out of it. We're going to be overloaded with herbs really soon here. So, I think it's about now, too. Should be out of room. Yep. So you can use items that you find as you find them, which we will do. Because we have no more room. So any items that we see before we even bother picking it up, we're going to have to drop herbs or something. We're going to have to drop herbs. Oh, it's like acid, bro. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop down and pick another fight here. As you can see, the enemies are nothing particularly... Impre they're not impressive. I mean, the only one I wish would do the skill is the uh, slimes. They're not doing the divide. Maybe green slimes don't, but other slime variations later in the game do, so... That might be part of why we're not saying much in that regard. We gotta stop another, uh... slime from even cover up here. And actually make it so the characters auto-attack. I don't believe in doing that. There's no reason whatsoever to ever use the auto-attack function, unless you're that bored. Okay, so we've done that. Let's keep moving. I don't think there's any treasure over here per se, but it doesn't hurt to look. Might be some gold or something. No. Let's go ahead and head down through here. You see we get blocked off that way, but there's some bats over there, so we know that. As we continue to move. Running, 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 running everywhere. You see there's a potion and some gold. That we'll want to acquire. Let's finish off the bat team here. Let's see. So, this is the first. We'll have Sue go for the ones that are further out. There they go. But she's starting to max out her, her weapon level pretty quickly here, which is a shame because Justin's still got, got a ways to go before we want to give up his baton. So I'm hoping that pretty soon we get him a little closer. There's a triple bat battle here. For, for your pleasure, three bats to kill. So we're going to make sure Justin gets the majority of kills here. Just by default. As we let Sue just get some of the ones that are a little further away. Because, yeah. 
And Sue is technically... No, Justin's still faster. Okay. Eh, whatever. Let her defend. That should be 16 points for Justin. So he should be one battle from leveling up his... Weapon one more. Yeah, or seven, seven experience. So I don't even care about regular levels. Those will level up on their own. It's the weapons and stuff that you need to concern yourself with. Okay, that's backtracking. We don't want to do that quite yet. No reason to backtrack. I think we got the rock axe. There's not much else over here that I can think that I can remember. So let's go ahead and check up here. Probably an enemy up here. So let's see. And surprisingly, there isn't. Okay, so, oh yes there is. There we go. I was going to say, there should be one more battle, because this should work in a very specific way. As we fight against some green slimes. More green slimes, anyway. As we, let's do attack that one. There we go. Let's go ahead and finish these suckers off. Yeah, but they don't do enough damage to warrant us having to defend, but whatever. We are victorious yet again! Yip, 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 yip. Okay, now, now what we'll want to do is I think Justin's mace level should be at level 4. That's where we wanted to stop. Man, it should be at level 4. doesn't mean it is. Um, man, it needs one more level, doesn't it? Well, this is probably a, a good place to stop anyway. Like I said, Suze is at level 4. I don't know. It's really up to you. We'll leave it equipped for now. Until we get that last level. Because that will be coming up. We will be able to do that very soon. Just not at this exact moment. We are not quite there yet. But once we get there, it'll all work itself out. Well, I'm sure it will. Uh... Er... Must be up here. We gotta do is we gotta get over. Uh, where's the stairway? That's where we want to go. How do we get there? Because we want to get that too, and it's all. I say it's all relevant to going this way. Here it is. As that's gonna fall, so we gotta come back again. That's something we definitely want, so let's discard something out. Let's discard an herb. Which, when we get back into town, it's going to be something we sell, pretty much. We're going to sell most of that stuff. Because a lot of... We, there's no reason to carry herbs on you after the second dungeon, really. So if you're carrying herbs, chances are we're gonna, they're going to get sold. And you don't want to drop gear, because that stuff can be sold for, for dough, man. So hold on to those goodies. Don't be a stranger. Okay, we knocked that down. Yeah, the first time I knocked that thing over when I was a kid, I actually screwed up by uh, walking straight ahead. <laughs> okay, so now that we've done that, we come to here, where there's a big giant head. Obviously, we're hiding somewhere that's not, you know. We would have been found, it did. Um, okay, there's no gold there, so let's go ahead and we'll sit real we'll recover that we don't need, we didn't really need to, and we'll save. Alright, so we're all saved up. <laughs> you don't say! Your butt is shining! Yeah, I have a shiny butt, that's kind of how I roll. Now my crotch is shining. Yep, my ass is hot, ain't it? It's as hot as... Holy crap! And then we get this... Open sesame. As that all takes place, yay. Must be the real spirit stone! <laughs> yes, we are the first ones to enter this new section. 
Ooh. Isn't that awesome? Let's go ahead. So this is, we're the first people in however long to be in this locale, one might say. So what, is, what does this button do, Frank? As you can see, it looks like it makes the room spin. some sort of manner. Let's go inside and check it out. As it spins, 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 spins. Where does it lead? Holy crap. It's alive! Alive! I'm sure great discoveries of the ancient Angelo civilization lie ahead. His pants are, f or his butt is shining again. Isn't it? And look at now, a bunch of dudes are staring at his butt. Funny how that works, ain't it? As we are introduced, yeah, I'm sure it is calling. It's calling. It's calling collect. By the way. As we now head inside, inside. <laughs> Sorry, move the mic. Better position. So I won't Welcome, be so he who holds the spirit stone. Holy crap! It's an answering machine. It's the Avon calling lady. Crap. Let's go check it out because it's shiny. Blinded by light. Eek! What was that? <laughs> Welcome, he who holds the spirit stone. Crap, it's a lady. Symbol of the promise between the humans and the spirits. Who? Who are you? I am Liette of Alent. I have lived through and inherited the history of Angelo. Holy shit, it's like real magic! What? W what's going on? Ah, we're, we're gonna fall! That would actually please me now. Don't be scared. This is the land you live in, when seen from the height of the stars. Come, please tell me. What were you seeking when you opened the door? Gee, you're uh, sort of putting me on the spot. Hey, how did you know that I have a spirit stone? All power is born from the light of the spirit stone. Without it, the door of Angelo does not open. But Angelo is just a mythical world. It is no myth. The stone that you hold is the ancient symbol of the promise between the humans and spirits. Look. In this, we go into yet another cinematic. A world created by an eternal promise between the light of the spirits and the wings of the Icarians. This is the world of Angelo. The light of the Icarians and the grace of the spirits will not wane lest all of the stars sparkling in the sky turn to embers. And thus, more backstory. Ever since receiving the blessing of the spirits, the people unyoked themselves of the original restrictions and began to walk along the path of evolution. By giant making flying dildos, we got it. 
the light of the Icarians and that of the Spirit Stones are the symbols of peace in this world. Say. The shiny. The shiny! So there's a good chunk of some Angelonian backstory for you. Not that you may have cared, because a lot of this isn't really relevant at this point, other than maybe it might fascinate you. But that's up for you to decide. Holy crap, she's flying! You don't say. I have to agree. Please tell me if this is true. Yeah, maybe. Do you desire to wear? Long journey, and I may lose my way. Huh? You're so motivating. Motivating. So we have to play. Go to a place called the Lent, or I call it the Lint. We're heading to the town of Lint. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another moment of holy shit, it's like real magic. Uh. It was a dream. It was a dream beyond the stars that you've yet to find. It is real, that's right. It's totally real. Totally real. So there it is. Our adventure has been set forth for us to reach the world, or the town, or the ancient civilization of Alent. Or whatever. Alright, so let's skedaddle now that we've gotten all of our information. Information, as one might call it. Let's go ahead and blow this pops of a stand. As we head out. Who goes there? Uh oh. Great. Holy crap, he's armed. that your life is in jeopardy. His eyes are not smiling. Listen carefully. Alexander. Wow, he's such key. He was such a nice guy earlier. Now he's being a total dick. Holy crap. Person you ever meet, but if you know, oh god. Damn it, woman, keep your trap shut. Secret. Oh god, it sounds like something that you would see in American, you know, American, uh, Americanized, uh, FBI, CIA, 
how they play their stuff. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! You are a retard. See ya, chump. What an idiot! What a moron! What a fool! Thinking he could pose any kind of threat to me. Oh, wait a minute, then there's this. Our first boss battle against an enemy known as, I think, the Rockbird. Boss battles in this game are... They start off pretty easy, almost pathetically easy, and then they tend to get a little harder later. As you can see, he's already charging up an attack called the Rock Feather. One of the things we can do is we can throw a Puffy Kick at it. If we want to. We don't have to. Let's go ahead and hit him with V-Slash. The idea, though, is, is that we normally want to cancel out his attack. But we're not going to worry about that, really, because even if he does hit us, he's not going to hit us that hard. Because we'll use everything we got on him, too. Um, yeah, well, since we already did uh, Puffy Kick, we can't do Rah Rah anymore, so... No point in... And saving up SP now. Kablamo! And as you can see, these attacks are actually knocking him down on his timer and keeping him from getting a turn in. So as you can see, this is definitely a pretty good strategy if you want to avoid him being able to get a turn in. We're going to go with critical attacks because I think we're out. Yeah, so critical attacks will all do the same thing our power attacks did, knocking him down. But more specifically... It'll keep him from attacking, but as you can see, we didn't even take a single hit. He's not a strong boss. Good, win. Good, win. <laughs> Good experience, though, that's for sure. <clears throat> but as we noted before, Justin still needs another level of mace, so we're gonna hang on to that mace a little while longer, but not much longer. Not much. Not too much, anyway. Hopefully. All right, and we scram. And that's, that ends our Adventures of Assault Ruins, for the most part. You're damn right. Some of us have mad skills. Well, apparently he gets a kick out of assaulting children. This is why you should not have, you should not, uh, let your children spend time with crazy strangers. So, we have options. We can go back into the ruins if you really want to. There's really no reason to. But, you know, some people would. As you can see, I went ahead and, uh, recovered, but I didn't save. I don't think there's really reason to yet. So, let's go ahead and head back to farm. So, Port Town of Perm. Port Town of Perm. Parm. <laughs> thus we are home, sweet home. So, let's go ahead and. Before we do anything, let's go to the general store, sell off our junk. Let's go ahead and sell off the crap we have no intention of using for a while. The wood sword we can obviously not sell, but we'll put that away. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and put that away. 10 HP is nothing compared to what we really need, so let's sell the sweets. Bananas 12 HP, we'll keep it. Herb, the adventurer, and the shiny shoes can go. Keeping the rock axe. And since I don't really use these throwable items, I tend to sell them because they're actually worth a lot. I mean, dynamite is worth a pretty hefty sum. So there we go. We'll keep all that stuff. And we'll take a look at some of the gear here. Ceramic sword and the metal bat are obviously upgrades. Um, I would actually pick these two up. 
but really, we're talking attack of 12, aren't we? So let's look at Justin when he has the rock axe. So, 25, as opposed to 29. So the ceramic sword is really the better way to go. Ooh, this is tough. This is actually pretty tough to figure out. Um, well, first off, let's pick them both up. So let's pick up a metal baton, which is what this is. We only need one, so let's go ahead and trade that to Sue here. And then we're just going to buy a ceramic sword. It's better than the stuff we're going to find later, so that's why I'm doing it. Really, what I should be doing, well, what I should really do is this. Oh, I sold her other weapon, didn't I? Uh, never mind. Never mind. And we'll just work on baton axe and the ceramic sword as we need, as needed. We may actually just even work. I may even sell the rock axe. Um, let's go ahead and look at armor here. Whatever we can afford. Sue could use an upgrade. They both could use this. So, let's go ahead and grab these two first. They're still short, though, a little bit. We need 150, huh? Do we have anything else we can sell that can help us get to that 150? The wood pole can go. Sell the wood pole. Little short. The rune ring, that's right. No real use for the rune ring and the banana. There we go. Now we have enough to get it. So this should be able to get you all the stuff that you can really upgrade with. There's not really much else worth buying in this store after this moment. So we trade that in. And thus, we're good. Alright, so that's everything there that needs to be done. Yay! Let's go ahead and head back to the restaurant. We're gonna dump off the uh, wooden sword for sure. Of course I know, we need to get a ship. But she was a pirate, she should know these things. Arr! Stash item. We're obviously stashing the wood sword because we have no real use for it right now. But we're gonna keep everything else. Because we can't sell the wooden sword, so there's no real point in doing that. And thus, this will get us into a great I'm hungry thingamajig here, where we find out about getting a new ship. Alright. See, and as you can see, we didn't have to really do a lot of backstory talking with his mother and stuff. No real reason to. So, we'll just continue. I don't want to waste a lot of time with that, so... Eh. We could have saved money by not buying stuff at the store and just waiting until we find gear, but I'm trying to use it as a way of saying, hey, you know, this is how somebody would react if they've never played this game before. And a lot of times you may not find gear that's better than you know, what you've got. So, what you can find in the store. So sometimes it is better to pick up store-bought stuff. So let's head to the pier here. The dock. To find out what we need to do. What you want to do is, obviously this is one of those things where you talk to everybody, but... We get a pass. Okay, so now pretty much what we're doing gonna have going on now is we're gonna get sent on a bunch of random escapades to find all the things that we're looking for here. So first off, we need to find some dude named Java, which I don't think was his name in the original Japanese version, and I'll explain that a little later. But it does actually make sense. Let's go ahead and head in here, and we meet this lady. I 
Okay, so she can't get into the cafe without the key, so we offer to look for it. So he's apparently off at the harbor again. They apparently want you to know where this harbor is. Let's go ahead and head back all the way to the harbor and get the key to open the place. Then we have to come back later tonight. A little bit of a hassle, but why not? We gotta do all this stuff. May as well do it now. If you look around, I think this is the guy here. Not. It's one of these clowns. You? No, it's not a kid kid. It's like a young adult. One of these guys. Alright, so we've got the key. Now we get to make another trek back to the bar. Now it's funny because they won't let kids in a place that serves coffee. So obviously this is one of those moments in video game history where they didn't think we would understand the concept of a bar because there are fucking bottles outside this place and there's a giant keg. There's no coffee served in kegs. And there's no coffee served in bottles unless it's iced coffee. Okay? Nor would there be a poster of a naughty chick on a coffee shop. Starbucks would never have that. Maybe coffee bean, but not Starbucks. And thus we are brought into another scene here. Scene disruptions. Uh oh. See, that's the reality of it right there. If one guy can't do it, there's probably nobody else could. Nobody else could probably do it. Uh-oh. Yep. Wow, he's kind of got a fixation on uh, slaughtering children, it would appear. It's so much fun. You know, with their little quarrel. So it appears that this clown is finally leaving the area of harm. Upon what was probably the airship. So now we get to go off to the cafe. Go ahead and do that. Well, it's nighttime because, you know, cafes are only open at night in this game. Or perhaps they're not cafes, but full blown freaking cocktail based bars! It's a freaking bar! Okay, so now that we're in here, we can have whatever we want, like freaking cocktails. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so here's the deal, we can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what you can do is you can talk to people. We, you know, sit here and wait for this nonsense to finish. Talking to all of these clowns here. Old world copy my ass. So it's mostly just a bunch of random crap. Just after talking to them all, we will get Java's wallet that we get to take back to him. 
All right. So now that we've done that, we have the we have to go back to the house. Uh, if there's a drunkard outside this place, let's go ahead and run, 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 run. Run home. Wolf. We enter here and back in the restaurant we go. Oh great. Ow! Yeah, he doesn't get away with anything, does he? So that's another dinner event takes place. So again, another moment where I ditch a lot of this side discussion would be really fair, so... Let's head to the train station. Let's head up. Up and over. So, on the next episode of Let's Play Grandia, we're gonna go to the Lek Mines to meet Mr. Java. And before we actually end this episode, let's finish the rest of this scene out of here. May as well. We arrive here at the farm station. Okay, so we get a free a freebie here. Go ahead and exploit it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking weirdo. And thus, we are off on this tiny little train. We are on the Choo Choo of Justice! Choo 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 Choo, no, I'm just kidding. Choo Choo. I thought I had more trains than just those three. Maybe there wasn't enough virtual information on the disc. <laughs> Figures. Thus, we are slowly coming to a stop here. And arrive, now we arrive at our location of choice. Select mines. As the train takes off, maybe? <laughs> the door is shut itself, that's always funny. Alright, let's keep moving here. Obviously, this is the house where that we're looking for. This is Java's house. Right near the train track, nothing special. And here comes the drunk, I mean the caffeine freak. <laughs> <laughs> He's also an, an alcoholic. Can't be my ass. You don't say. Yes, yes, yes. So they're he's pretty much telling him about their adventure like uh, trying to get this old drunker to agree. Just be ridiculous who said you get there for free. I'm gonna come to trial before you and you may get the witch what would you desire. 
It's way the way of an adventure. Okay. And thus, we now get to follow Java here to do his bidding, pretty much. Which is over this way. As this was all blocked off by boxes, now it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can rest and do all that stuff. So, anyway, on the next episode of Let's Play Grandia, we will delve into the Lek Mines for the trial of the drunkard. We'll see you then.